This is the Corvette Z06, and it's a little bit like a Porsche 911 GT3 because it's the more track-focused, hardcore version of the C8 Corvette. In fact, this one is more like the GT3 Touring because it hasn't got the big wing of the Z07 package. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. The upgrades over the standard C8 Corvette. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive, and of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from zero to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson. And you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. The big news about the Z06 version of the Corvette is that it has an all new 5.5 litre natural aspirated V8 engine. Wait a minute, it's a slightly smaller engine than the 6.2 in a standard car. However, it produces more power. So the standard C8 has 495 horsepower. This Z06 has 670 horsepower. It's a massive increase. Also, unlike the standard car, which has a cross plane crank, like most other US V8s, this has a flat plane crank, like a Ferrari. Now, it drives the rear wheels only via an eight speed automatic gearbox with dual clutches and launch control. And so now I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I feel that my t-shirt is actually climbing up my body in this wind. Yes, I'll put that away. You don't want to see that. Apparently the Corvette Z06 should do 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. I'm not so sure though, so I'm gonna test it with my specialist timing gear. Here we go. Oh, slow get away. It's like it's managing the power. Not even close, four point. What's that, 4.18? You could tell that in launch control mode, even though you've got the stability and traction like off, it's managing the power to prevent slip, and that pull away was just so subdued. It feels much quicker once it's going than that number suggests. Let's have another go. What I'm gonna do now is ignore launch control. So I'm gonna change it up a bit, gonna go into a slightly different setting. Still with the traction control off, but I'm gonna manage the power myself. So hold on the brake and then go for it. <laughs> Is that quicker? 3.84. I reckon it might be able to go quicker still. Certainly nowhere near 2.6 yet though, are we? One last go, bit more brake boosting. Is that better? Yeah, it was. 3.61. That's a whole second slower than it's supposed to do. Do you know what? I think I need to get the owner of this car to actually launch it and see if he can do better because he's a NASCAR racing driver. His name's Jesse Iwuji. Let's get him in the car. All right, and Jesse, it's your turn, yep. your car. You know how to get the best launch out of it on this surface, which isn't ideal to be fair, is it? No, it's not ideal at all. Not okay, these tires. okay. so those are the excuses out of the way. <laughs> what you've got to do at least is beat the time that I got. You don't know what that is yet though, do you? I don't, and you heated up the motor too, so now I'm running with- Ah, come motor. on, with the heat Let's sink tire. nonsense. Okay, <laughs> right, come on. I think the problem isn't the motor, I think it's traction, but it's your turn to do it, and we'll see if you can beat my time, but you, I'm not gonna tell you what that is before you do it. So, got the specialist timing gear running, my friend. Okay. Put the window up and off you go. Let's do it. I'm not gonna lie, that looked well faster than when I did it. Did it look faster to you, Lewis? Yeah, it did. <laughs> what, what did he do? All right, let's see if I beat your time. Right, right, right. All that... I got one chance. <laughs> ah! Did was, I beat it? Was that the time up on there? 3.74. 3.74. Okay, it actually right. looked quicker than when I did it. Okay. But you didn't beat me. Damn it. I did 3.61. Ah! <laughs> Did you use launch control? I, I use launch control. But you said not to. I didn't use. My best time was without launch control. I'll, I'll just do it without launch okay, control. Do, then. Okay, you yeah, have a, you, that was your method of doing it on this surface. <laughs> Why didn't you use it? You didn't use your own method, you idiot. I want to see. I want to see. Come on, have work. another go. All right. Gosh, it sounds amazing, doesn't it? I wonder if he beat me that time. We'll tell by the look on his face when he comes back. Right, Andy. Right, 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 right. No, 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 you didn't, did you? 375 on that one, I think. 375? Yeah, three, oh, five. mate. You're lighter than me. I'm a better driver. Possibly. <laughs> I'm probably not. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny to get me in a NASCAR, watch me just crash into the barrier. 
But okay, so I think the problem is traction, isn't it, on this surface? I can feel each time it's wanting to pull a little bit of power to keep the traction going, so it's like tough. Because it's not letting you spin, right? And you kind of need a little bit of spin just so you can keep uh -huh. on driving forward, but it's pulling that back and all of a sudden you're not getting everything out of the car. Yeah, but I mean, 2.6 and I've got 3.61, so a whole second. On the street, you're definitely not going to hit 2.6. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for letting me launch it. and. Um, yeah, for uh, trying to beat me. Yeah, Shame yeah. you didn't. I'll keep on working on it. <laughs> the Z06 gets upgraded brakes over the standard C8 Corvette. At the front, you have 370 millimeter discs gripped by six piston calipers. And at the rear, you have 380 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers. Now, unlike the standard C8, the Z06 can be upgraded with carbon ceramics, which this car has. And then you have 400 millimeter discs at the front and 390 millimeters at the rear. Chevrolet have heavily worked on the Corvette chassis for this C8 Z06 over the standard car. So you've got a wider track, you've got wider tyres, you've also got a rated suspension which is 30% stiffer than standard, you've got beefier anti-roll bars and they've altered the geometry to make it more aggressive. Now let's see what that feels like when you drive it. Okay, let's take this for a spin. Not a spin, I don't want a spin. Oh my gosh, the engine. <laughs> oh, you can just play with it with all the noise. <laughs> you can play with it the same way you can play with a Porsche GT3 engine. Just makes such a great sound. It's so revvy, very responsive. Maybe not quite as hardcore, like angry as a GT3's engine, but oh, lovely. What's noticeably better than a GT3 though? The suspension. Well, on the road anyway. I've got it in sport mode, which is the middle setting, and it's just going over these bumps brilliantly. That is so impressive. And that'll mean that it's actually really, really easy to control on a bumpy, twisty country road in the UK. If Chevrolet ever bring the car over to Europe, Porsche skips about all over the place. Obviously on these roads out here, it's a little bit difficult to assess the car's handling, I'm afraid. It's very straight, not many corners. Need to head off somewhere, find some canyon roads. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time today, which is a real shame because I've heard great things about the handling of this car. Very balanced, very predictable, very stable. I mean, this is the only corner I've got here. Whoa! Oh, there's another one going to the right, but yeah, again. Oh, the steering's very sharp, and it feels so planted. <laughs> this engine is a screamer. It feels really, really responsive, really, really easy to drive. The only thing that I've got a little bit of a problem with, and it's minor, the brakes just feel a little bit over-assisted at the top part of the pedal, so you just brush them, and it's almost like you're doing a full emergency stop. I'd like a bit more progression, it's really my only complaint. Other than that, it's docile, yet clearly quite bonkers as well. I can't quite get the seat low enough to stop the buffeting at the top of my hair. It's like the wind just whizzes off the top of the windscreen and my hair's just going like crazy. I actually find it quite pleasant. It's a bit like having a head massage. Oh. <laughs> but I'm gonna look a little bit disheveled after this. Whoa! This thing absolutely flies. The Z06 gets a bunch of visual upgrades over the standard C8 Corvette, but they all do have a function. For instance, you have bigger air intakes here at the front to accommodate the larger radiators, and then this protruding splitter there for some added downforce. More on that in a bit. Moving down the side, the actual wheel arches stick out by about 30 millimeters over the standard car to accommodate those wider wheels, which are also larger in diameter. So now you've got 20s at the front and 21s at the rear, rather than the standard car's 19s and 20s. The Z06 also has this extended side skirt and bigger air intakes on the side. Once again, larger radiators. And you have this wide trim around it as well, which is rather nice. There's also the Z06 badging, just in case you haven't noticed the other changes. Now here at the rear, once again, got extended wheel arches, but this time by 40 millimeters, really makes this car look very muscular. Then at the back, 
two key differences over the standard car. The first, the quad tailpipes, instead of being arranged two and two, it's four in the center. And then there's this little gurney flap on the rear spoiler. Believe it or not, this adds an extra 50 kilograms of downforce at 190 miles an hour. Here on the inside, there are only a few changes over the standard C8. So the Z06 gets its own bespoke steering wheel. It's still hexagonal like the normal car, but it says Z06 on it. And you can upgrade it to have carbon fiber on it and carbon fiber shifter paddles. You also get upgraded sport seats. So they're called the GT2 bucket seat and they're really quite nice. And they have a bit of carbon fiber on them. But if you want to, you can pay extra to have the sport competition seats, which are even more aggressive and body hugging. Other changes include Z06 on the kick plates, and um, that's about it, really. The upgrades to the Z06 have had no negative effect on the practicality of the Corvette. So you have a front boot here with a decent amount of space. Look, you can see Jesse's helmet there, his racing helmet. Then at the back, you have a rear boot, a proper boot with some more space. In total, you have 357 litres of load space, which is a lot better than a Porsche 911, which is around 130 litres of space. There is a slight problem though, and that's if you want to take the roof down on the car. I'm just going to get the assistants to come in now to remove the roof and show you the issue. Obviously, one of the assistants is Jesse. <laughs> it's not the easiest process. I'm going to help them with this. There we go. Right. Then there's some jiggery pokery to get the roof in there. Are you sure that's ready to shut, Jesse? <laughs> Looks like it. It's your car, go on. Ah, there you go. Your boot space is somewhat reduced and you do need some help to actually fit it. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the Corvette Z06. The normal Corvette C8 starts from around $60,000. However, the Z06 starts from around $100,000, which is quite an uplift. What's worse though, is that in the United States, dealers can charge over the manufacturer's recommended retail price, which they can't do in the United Kingdom. So if you buy one of these new, you'll probably have to pay a premium with a dealer of about $50,000, which means you're looking at about $150,000 to get into one of these. The Z06's engine may be more powerful than the normal C8's, however, it has less peak torque, 624 newton meters instead of 630. The tires on this car are run flats, and that means that the sidewall is very, very stiff. And when you combine that with the fact that the profile is very, very low, they're really, really hard to fit. In fact, it's so labor intensive to fit these tires onto the wheel that one dealer is charging $600 to do all four corners. That does not include the price of the tires. Because this car has such good cooling, the warm-up procedure can take forever. So when you start it, you often have to wait for quite a while until the red line mark moves all the way around to 8,500 RPM, which is where you should be able to rev it to. So if you just bear with me. Some time later. Finally, we're good to go. Jesse decided to have some bespoke wheels made for his Corvette with a more aggressive offset. Reason being, the standard car's wheels just sit a little bit too inboard for his liking, so he wanted to stance it out. Apparently, he's actually improved the car's geometry and handling as a result. It's not like normal people fitting spacers and ruining how their car corners. However, he's made another change, which I'm not so sure about. For instance, the doors on the Corvette C8 open really wide, so it's quite hard to get in and out in tight parking spaces because you end up bashing the door because it's so long. So what Jesse's done is had this system fitted. Look, scissor doors, like a Lamborghini V12. I like that, it looks good, but there is a slight issue. Oh. When you try to open them, like I'm gonna do now, to try and lift them from here, it really is a bloody hell. Jesse, help! Can you help me out? You need a valet, I don't need to help you with this. Mate, they're not great. I think this is a mistake. I like the wheels, but not so much the doors. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow, five core features. You might think it's a bit of a shame that the Z06 has a soft limiter. So when you rev it, it doesn't go very high. Have a listen. 
Sounds promising with that sports exhaust, but there's a trick. Pull in both paddles and you can rev it all the way up. Go on, Jesse! Let me go! Now that is the sound of a flat playing crank. Just like you can get a Vizac pack for a Porsche GT car, you can get a Z07 pack for the Z06. That gives you carbon fibre wheels, which reduce weight by 18 kilos. You also get the carbon ceramic brakes as standard, 10% stiffer suspension, some canards at the front and a huge rear wing, and that doubles the amount of downforce. For this new 5.5 litre engine, Chevrolet got a Ferrari 458, removed its engine, stripped it down, reverse engineered it to create this thing, only they gave it an extra 100 horsepower over the Ferrari's engine. This is the most powerful naturally aspirated V8 engine in the world. The Z06 gets the MagRide adaptive dampers as standard with three different settings. There's tall, sport, and track. The normal C8 will pull 1.04 lateral G, whereas this Z06 can do 1.22. Oh yeah, I'm really feeling the G-force right now. So then what's my final verdict on the new Chevrolet Corvette Z06? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you can get allocation, you should just go right ahead and buy it. Especially if you can get it at a list price as well. But that's unlikely here in America because of the sneaky dealers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. What do you think of this car? Let me know in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And on that box there to get a car wow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. It's easy. Thanks for watching.